time, we have uh, Major John Hughes with us today and his family. And uh, I kind of tease guys, my, my World War II guys, once you hit 90, you go back to halves, but when you hit 100, you go back to months. So uh, John is 108 months old. 10 months, sorry, 10 months old. Uh, what we want to do is just kind of recognize what John did at Pearl Harbor. Um, we had several people, including our founder, Jack Hammett, that was a Pearl Harbor survivor. Um, and so we are glad that John is with us today, just uh, four days after uh, the attack 78 years ago. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit with these slides that we have written down. And then um, I'll ask a couple of questions of John, and, um, and we'll go from there. So... Um, John was, um, real quickly, Sunday morning, December 7th, 1941. What were you doing? Were you, I think you were going to get something in the morning, weren't you? I don't know. I don't get the newspaper, Sunday paper. So, you're going to, so he's going to get the Sunday paper at like 7.45 or so, right? And all of a sudden, you were one of the first people that recognized that those weren't American planes, correct? I was outside. Could see them. Yes. I saw some planes coming in and strafing. Well, they had a red ball on the side. And that was a good indicator. Yes. <laughs> see the see the see the but they were real low. And then didn't you run, um, didn't you run and tell the other Marines to, that, that we were under attack? I told them to come out, get loaded and start firing. We were under attack. Now you couldn't get to your the big weapons, correct? What? You couldn't get to the big weapons, right? Everything was locked up. Okay, so this picture that's up on the slide behind you right now, what were you doing there? Are you sure you had our rifles? That was what we had. So you only had rifles to shoot back at the Japanese zeros. Yes. And I asked you one time at boot camp, um, I asked you, did you hit them? And you said they were so low you couldn't what? Couldn't miss. <laughs> uh, also, you said, wasn't there something you said that was kicking up on either side of you as they flew over? Oh, the dust and stuff. Show where the shells were hitting. So they were strafing you guys, right? That was what they were for. So they were strafing you. So this picture right here is actually taken by the pool that they hadn't finished. And that's John on the far left. So that is taken December 7th, 1941. John Hughes. Uh, what, those were M1s, John? Your rifles, what were those? M1. M1. So those were M1s that John was shooting at the, um, at the planes. To give you an idea, this is an M1 shell. So, right? I think he's a little bit outgunned. Um, but thank God, John was okay, right? Um, John went, John, uh, you were okay, right? So they flew over, and then what happened? I went to Adam, and uh, they, they straightened the place and shot up a little bit, and uh, we retaliated. <laughs> That's about it. Did they, get, did they get all your planes that day? Yeah, just about all of them, yeah. So they went right down the road, straightened them, and shot them up, yeah. And you lost four friends that you knew that day, didn't you? Several, uh, yes. Right? And just a second, I'll pull it up. So, um, did you, right after that, did you, uh, that night, was it pretty scary that night? Were people concerned? Not too much. We well, didn't see what happened. That's all, that's all you could do. We didn't see. So the names of the gentlemen that, um, that he knew were Sergeant William E. Lushan, Jr., Private William G. Turner, PFC Edward S. Lawrence, and Sergeant Carlo A. Michelotto. And they all lost their lives on December 7th. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then you went on, you went to Pensacola and retrained as a pilot, correct? The dive bomber pilot? Yes. Uh, the dive bombers, SPDs, and uh, that was my bad job from then on, was a dive bomber pilot. And when, so you ended up going to a few places in the Pacific, right? Well, uh, at Bougainville, 
and then the Philippines. Uh, I can't remember one. Uh, well, I can have, of course. And, uh, yeah, New Georgia and Bougainville. Marshall Islands. Marshalls. I remember. And it was how many missions? Do you remember? I don't know. I think 150, maybe. 150, and I believe how many were over Guadalcanal? I can't remember that. How many? 50. 50 over Guadalcanal. Yeah. Over Guadalcanal, yeah. So I asked John one time, I said, what was it like? I said, were they shooting at me? And he goes, oh yeah, they were shooting at me. So if you see Midway and you see what a dive bomber goes through, it's insane. So you started about how high, when you when you began your approach, you were from, how high were you in the air? Well, it depended. Sometimes you got pretty high, you know, 12, 14,000, but normally come in about 8,000 and roll over at 8,000, rack off at about 1,500, pull out, hopefully before you hit the ground. Yeah. <laughs> and you said 1,500. You told me a couple times you had to drop down below. Below 1,000, yeah. But you had to do a pretty tight pull out or you did hard stuff. So you're coming in from 10 to 12,000. And they're shooting. Oh, yeah. They're shooting. They're shooting at you all the way. They don't, they don't take time off. Yeah, so he's a straight dive bomb being shot at for 10,000 feet. Um, and so then, um, I want to go real quickly. So you made it through World War II, thank God, for that. <laughs> and uh, you retrained, right? And you, 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 uh, you retrained with a famous helicopter designer, didn't you? Uh, uh, Sikorsky, yeah. And, and you went to Korea, and what did you do in Korea? Uh, so then, mostly helicopter missions. Pick it up the wounded, take it to the hospital, that type of stuff. And you shared with me that you said that was more meaningful. That was more meaningful that to you, right? Saving lives. I can hear you. Oh, you were saying about saving lives? Yeah. Yeah, was, that was our job was to get people to the hospital real quick. So we pick them up on the front line, take them right to the hospital. I'm going, to, I'm going to go through like the rest of this presentation real quickly. Is there anything else you'd like to say? And, and you know what? If you want to say something during the presentation, throw something at me and I'll come back over, okay? So is there anything else you'd like to say right now about Pearl Harbor or anything? Right off, man. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. All right. So, um, so real quickly, I'm just going to fly through this as quickly as possible. I, I appreciate, um, you know, John, this is a very unique opportunity that we have to have John with us. So I'm going to go through this a little bit. So here's John on December 7, 1941. What's kind of cool is my, my son. My son is a, a combat photographer in the Marine Corps. So the guy that took that picture was a combat photographer. So my son is kind of following picture-wise in your footstep. Next slide. We're going to go quick. One next slide. So here's John at the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor three years ago. Good looking guy is wearing this shirt. He has it on right now. Um, so he was able to go to that with his whole family. And you know what? I didn't have it in here, but there's a picture that's really cool of John with about 40 family members. If John would have been killed that day, you would not see those 40 people in that picture. They never would have existed. Right? Next slide. So uh, I want to show you this. this is, so we actually called uh, John and his family, and Trinity and I did a FaceTime of the Eva Field ceremony where John was at. So this is at the mass, uh, Trinity at the mass, and we, we FaceTime with John. So John was able to see the entire Eva Field ceremony and, uh, and watch it, and he got to talk to the people that were at Eva Field uh, on December 8th. So we did that on December 8th. Excellent. Uh, this is us doing the two bell ceremony. Uh, you can see Hawaii stuff grows all the time, um, but you can, that's Trinity, and we did the two bell ceremony for the four Marines that were killed uh, that day. Um, and then there's John, my son's graduation, boot camp graduation, my son, and John, and, and this is Stu Headley. John is um, there only 81 years after he graduated Marine Corps boot camp. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, next slide. This is Trinity and I at the USS Arizona on the eve of December 7th at sunset. Next slide. Uh, there we are. Next slide. Uh, this is Lou Contour. He is one of the last three living USS Arizona survivors. He was on the Arizona um, for Laura Bruner being returned. Next slide. 
Um, this is Lauren Bruner, who was returned on December 7th, and Luke Contour. Uh, Luke, uh, that's Lauren Bruner again. That's fine. Let's see if this works. Next slide. Okay, is there a, is there a what you call it on there at all? A play button? Okay, play. Okay, that's all right. Okay, so I was just going to show you. So if you go see the, back, the, the, pic the, the picture of Midway, the new one, if you see, there's a gentleman by the name of Joe George that throws a monkey fist across to the USS Arizona from the Vestal. It looks like it's about 20 to 30 feet. What in reality happened was Lauren Bruner, who I just showed you, was the guy that caught that and tied it off. They were 70 to 100 feet away. So when you see this scene, go to the next uh, slide. When you see this scene of them going across hand over hand, it was 70 to 100 feet. And it's actually a combination. The one guy is looking at his hands. That gentleman's name um, is actually um, Donald Stratton. And he burned all of his fingertips and everything. So he never had, uh, he never had uh, uh, fingerprints the rest of his life. And Lauren Bruner was actually burning as he went across 70% uh, of his body. Next slide. Oh, there it goes. So if you watch this, so if you watch, they're going to show them climbing, but mind you, this was 70 feet that they went. So here he is trying to reach, and he's going across, and that's literally what happened. And they grabbed him before, and he was literally burning as he was going across. So that's, that's the gentleman that just returned to the USS Arizona. Okay, next slide. Okay, so here they are handing the remains to the diver of uh, Lauren Bruner. Next slide. This, what they do is there's four divers in the water, you see, and they hold the remains over the top of the water. Next slide. And that is them just before they slip below to take the, return, the remains back to the ship. They walk, literally walk across the ship, uh, and then they, they, let me see the next slide. Nope, okay, go back. Um, they, uh, they stop above gun turret two or four, and then they swim back into the ship and place the remains back into the ship. Next slide. These are five of the ten survivors that made the trip. Um, this guy was the first time he'd come back in 78 years. So the first time back to Pearl Harbor after December 7th. Next. Uh, there's Stu Headley in Trinity. So um, he's just a great, wonderful guy. He was on the USS West Virginia. Um, and he was in that picture of boot camp with John Hughes. Came, he came to my son's boot camp graduation. Next slide. Uh, Herman Bledsoe. So, uh, Captain Thomas told the story of having being blown up on the Nevada. It was the only ship that got underway. Just so you know, the heat on the Arizona was so intense, they had to duck below the bulkhead. To let you know how intense, in 1952, uh, Captain Thomas was two miles away from an atom bomb test. After the heat wave and shock wave went over him, he stood up and said the heat from the atom bomb was less intense than the heat from the USS Arizona. Just to put it in perspective, what those guys were crawling across. So, this is Herman Bledsoe. When they got blown up, they beached at Hospital Point. Herman had had his shoulder blown off, and uh, Major uh, Captain Thomas had a bunch of holes in his body. They were some of the first people, because they beached at Hospital Point, to the hospital. As they were taking him there, they were literally both bleeding out. Their blood is literally flowing on the floor, out the door. Um, they get them, they put them on the lawn. He said the nurses looked like angels coming across in white. Uh, and Herman died beside him because uh, he had lost his shoulder. He was his ammunition runner. And he said, you know, our blood ran the same. We'll forever be blood brothers. But did I tell you Herman was black? He goes, there is no difference between us. We bleed red. We died for our country. And we all need to be treated equally. So that was something that he took the rest of his life. Next slide. So we, sorry, so we go to his grave. Back up. We go, we go to his grave this year. I, we put an Oklahoma flag, but he died on December 7th at 20 years old. And we don't believe anybody pretty much other than us have, and the Thomases have ever visited his grave. So we visit his grave. Next slide. Um, here we go. Some members. Captain Robert E. Thomas. So uh, we got his picture here. So you guys can see, remember one of our former members here. Next slide. Uh, there we are with the USS Nevada. Uh, that's where it was moored. Next slide. Uh, guy look familiar? Yeah. Hey, Jack Hammond, right? So, um, just so you guys know, I, I tell everybody, you know, if Trinity lives to be the same age as John, she'll probably live a few years longer because she's a, a girl. Um, uh, that's somebody that is uh, 162 years after Pearl Harbor that knew somebody that was there, and Trinity will remember. So, um, so know that. Uh, John, the Trinity will remember. Next slide. 
There's Trinity, we just before we actually missed our plane. So I went and gave John a, a lay uh, before we went over, and then we visited Jack and Mary Jo and, and a lay, and I didn't calculate my time right, so Trinity I actually missed our plane to Hawaii. We, I, thank God, got on the next plane over because they were booked through like Friday. So anyhow, we, I go by every December 7th and put a lay on Jack's grave uh, right over here. <laughs> That is, sorry, that's the one I pulled up. Uh, that is, we were leaving the USS Arizona. I thought it was appropriate um, with the flag at half mass and the last man who was returned. But, uh, but anyhow, just wanted to share that with you. Um, so, John, 78 years ago, on December 7th, was Pearl Harbor. Um, when you go back and visit Pearl Harbor and Eva Field, does it seem like it was a long time ago or does it seem like it was something that just happened? Well, it seems like a long time ago. It's, it's been a while. <laughs> so is there anything you want to say about your friends from Pearl Harbor or anything else about the military? Uh, I think it's all been said. Okay, how about, uh, how about a Marine Corps shout-out? How about a Marine Corps shout-out? 